Hi everybody, my name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com and today I'd love to share with you one of my students' favorite fundamental movement skills games, Space Invaders. For build one of the games, the teacher will establish a playing area by setting up six bases using cones and designating a line as a throwing line. The class will then be divided into six teams with each team setting up at their base. On the opposite side of the throwing line, the teacher will set up different space towers. Each space tower is built up of a hoop, a ring, and a thin pin. Before giving each team their energy ball that they'll use to knock over the space towers, the teacher will take a second to demonstrate the proper technique for the underhand throw, making sure to focus on each of the five important keys of the skill. Using the underhand throwing key cards, the teacher will assign a key to five of the six teams. The teacher will then give each team their energy ball and place themselves at the sixth team where there's no key card. Now, the first player sitting in each team moves up to the throwing line and using an underhand throw, tries to throw the energy ball to knock over one of the space towers. As they do so, their teammates back at the base observe their throw and try to determine whether or not they're demonstrating the key that was assigned to their cone. Once they've performed their throw, the throwing player goes to collect the ball and goes back to their base where they'll receive feedback from their teammates. Now, at the base where the teacher is, the teacher is observing the throw and really trying to break down and tell the student exactly what they need to focus on in order to improve. After a couple minutes of play, the teams will rotate bases so that the teams get to focus on a new key and the teacher gets to work with every student. Before moving on to build two, the class will go back to the whiteboard where they will have a discussion about the important keys of underhand throwing and try to determine which keys really helped them with the accuracy that they needed in order to be able to knock over the space towers. Doing this really helps the students tie meaning into each of the important keys, which makes it more likely for them to think about them as they perform their underhand throwing. In build two, we're gonna shift our focus from accuracy to power by replacing the space towers with power stations. To set up the power stations, the teacher will simply replace the thin pins with basketballs. Now to knock over the power station, the students have to knock the basketball out of the hoop, so they require a lot more power in their throwing. Now there are a few modifications I really like doing with the power stations. For one, if you really want to challenge a student's power, I like replacing the basketballs with a light medicine ball. This really pushes the students to explore the keys that are going to help them throw with more power, and the students eat it up. They absolutely love this challenge. Now one issue I've noticed in the past when playing this game with my students is that because the targets are low, some students will try to use a roll instead of an underhand throw. To counter this, I'll build some of the power stations up high on buckets, which really pushes the students to work on that release between their knee and waist level. The real fun in build 2 is when you start working up a whole lot of different power stations, which gives the students a lot of choice and lets them experience success at their own level. Just like at the end of build 1, we'll end build 2 back at the whiteboard, where we'll continue our reflection on the important keys of underhand throwing, this time really trying to focus on which ones allow us to throw the ball with power. Okay, so now that we've got a lot of practice in and we're feeling good about our underhand throwing, it's time to play Space Invaders. In this build, the teacher will divide the class into two teams and assign each team to their own base, which will be at either end of the playing area. This base will be their spaceship. The area in between the spaceships is outer space, and that's where the meteors are. Each team will be given a large amount of energy balls and will get to select one player who will play the role of spacewalker. Spacewalkers are players that hang out in outer space and if they find any loose energy balls just lying around, they get to pick them up and send them back to their team spaceship. That said, spacewalkers are not allowed to block any throws from the opposing team. Once the teams are set up, they can begin to throw the energy balls to try and knock the meteors off of their rings and send them crashing into the opposing team's spaceship. The team that manages to send the most meteors crashing to the opposing team's spaceship wins the round. If a player on a team sees a meteor rolling towards their spaceship, they get to throw a defensive throw to try and send that meteor back. Players in the spaceships are not allowed to touch the meteors with their hands or feet, and once the meteors cross into their spaceship, the teacher will collect it to count that point. At the end of the lesson, the whole class goes back to the whiteboard, where they get to reflect and discuss on the progress they made throughout the lesson. So that's how I build up Space Invaders, a super fun fundamental movement skills game that I've broken down into three builds. If you're looking for more information on this game, such as modifications, related assessment tools, the grade level outcomes it focuses on, or if you just want to share your experience playing with your students, be sure to check out the game page which is linked in the description below. Once again, my name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching.